Scattered around the streets of Accra, Ghana are fashion designers whose clients are mainly limited to friends and family members living around the neighborhood. Uh... However, some of these local Ghanaian fashion designers are beginning to enjoy international recognition and patronage thanks to the efforts of people like Nana Tamaku, a young entrepreneur who in 2012 took the African fashion industry by storm with his fashion promotion blog and fashion shows. He operates the blog called Fashion Ghana, a fashion show called Accra Fashion Week and Confidence Modeling Agency. According to him, the outfit was established to create a space for buyers and designers to connect, especially giving African designers the ability to also tap into the huge funds available in the fashion industry of the Western world. Explaining further, he said, Fashion Ghana was uh, set up because generally we felt um, a lot of people wanted to access African fashion and they didn't have the avenue nor the information to know what's going on and usually we have these sort of um, notions where we say oh the west doesn't want to support us and and what have you but sometimes we've not created the right avenues for people around the world to support us so fashion ghana was meant to be this online boutique where people can go in and buy um, african clothes um, and in the process what we started doing was eventually we started writing articles because we wanted to encourage people to see the admiration in African clothes. Within a very short space and time it blew up and we had one million followers without paying for any adverts in the space of I'd say two years and you know basically Fashion Ghana was reaching out to people around the world because this is the first time they're literally getting to see African fashion. I mean, the, people have always seen African fashion like the one or the dashiki dress, or whatever. But th this time, they're getting to know what's going on in Cameroon, what's going on in Ghana. Asked how he runs the business, he said, "Well, usually we sell clothes from anything that we think looks good. You know, there are a lot of designers in Ghana. There are a lot of um, there are a lot of um, artisans, um, and there are just a lot of market stuff." that the public, you know, we might see that uh, very cheap plain print dress here um, as something that you just wear in your house on a casual day, but someone who is living in the West, it might be the moment of attraction because it's different from what they're used to having. So you'd have to understand the value of things, how people see things here and how people see things abroad. So we get these um, stuff that we believe you know uh, would be in, of interest to people and then we put it on the website and we sell and when it sells we either we have our own um, creatives who would make it depending on the product or we'll go to the designer and say hey your item has sold we want to buy it and ship it so um, that's where that comes in talking about his achievements so far the young entrepreneur said his platform has really contributed immensely to the popularity of African fashion I always, I usually don't say this to people because if I say this, they probably won't believe me. But when you see the wave of African fashion being popular in this particular time and era, it's literally because of fashion gun. I mean, we were having articles go viral. We were having people from Brazil, from Egypt, from, from Asia, just messaging us about the articles we are writing and how they are glad to know of our media platform and, and whatsoever. There are times where we'd have over that between 1,000 to 2,000 people an hour on our website and in a day 15,000, you know, um, and it goes on. And that's why when you see Accra Fashion Week, it's so international because people who have been tuned into Fashion Ghana can come from it. So. If you see the trend of African fashion going on now, most people might not believe it, but it's because of Fashion Ghana. Even when you see other media that are bigger than us write about a designer, nine times out of ten, we know that that media is writing about African fashion because of what they've seen on Fashion Ghana, because we were writing about that particular individual. So I think that's what I can say we've achieved, which is putting, making African fashion 
the end thing and if you see it if you map it you'll see it that the time it's gotten popular is literally in sync with the time fashion ghana was in operation between 2012 uh, late 2012 to 2013 and then onwards one interesting fact about the success of Tamaklo's business is the fact that he is also a web designer and a journalist and these skills help him to tailor his site to his specific needs talking about how he conceived Accra Fashion Week he said I always wanted to do a fashion event um, because I felt it was needed with what we we're doing with Accra Fashion Week but the concept of Accra Fashion Week wasn't in mind um, basically I had a guy who was doing a fashion show um, and we were fashion Ghana so he sent us the press release and asked us to publish it so the concept was very similar to Accra Fashion Week so I asked him why doesn't he do Accra Fashion Week because it's going to be a much bigger title and it's going to allow more scope for what he's trying to do and he said he didn't want to do Accra Fashion Week because there are other similar like fashion weeks in Ghana so I was like yes I sent him an email back this is someone who just wants us to publish his press release so I sent him an email back saying well they might be similar but it, yours will be different according to how you do it and then he sends me an email back saying no no just please publish the email we don't have any interest in doing a craft fashion week so now i'm writing him an email back to tell him why all the reasons why i think it will be a good idea and then in the middle of that i stop and i say hold on if you think it's so good for him to do it why don't you shut up and do it yourself and that's when the idea came in two th late 2015. When we started it, I had no money. So before the first one could have even existed, it meant we had a formula that works when you have no money. The other guys have kicked theirs off with sponsors. So when sponsors come tomorrow and say, sorry, we can't sponsor you, they're gone. We had to find designers and we had to find what they wanted and what they were looking for and create that value for them to be able to pay enough to sustain what we're doing. And that's how we did it. So basically what we sell to designers, most other events are not selling to them because they don't really care about what designers want they just want to do a show and go home and be proud they did a show so that's how we've been able to sustain it by creating the value for the event we we've brought international buyers to our craft fashion week um probably about four i mean it's 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 fairly small in numbers when you compare to the west but for what goes on in africa it's a lot and we're not talking about bringing international buyers who just came and sat down and watched. We're talking about international buyers that have been part participating in buying the clothes to stock abroad. Um, then we've had a lot more buyers who maybe have come and personally interacted with the designers. So to me, that's an achievement because I see it as a catalyst that's going to grow. Um, thirdly, our media outreach has been tremendous. We've been on BBC, we've been on Yahoo, we've been on Getty Images, we've been on Daily Mail. I mean, we've been supported a lot by a lot of African media, but these are foreign media that usually don't care about any fashion activities in, in Ghana or Africa per se. And here we have them flooding to our first show, our second show and our third show and just the event going viral. So to me, uh, our media outreach and our connect with buyers is what I would say has been a, a great achievement when it comes to Accra Fashion Week. Ask how many people have benefited from his platform, he said. We have a couple of designers who have been invited to different countries through Fashion Ghana, like African by Nana, uh, Brie Raja, um, some designers as well who we've had um, uh, airline companies contact us for them to design various things. You know, you have um, Fixed Fashion, who, sorry, uh, Gavachi, who was on Accra Fashion Week. And he's also got a lot of exposure in a short time because of fashion Ghana. So there are a lot of um, uh, designers. Maybe I need to sit back and do a lot of memorizing as well. But there's, there's been a lot of success stories 
for um, uh, designers. Uh, for example, there are even some stories where designers have been plagiarized by the West. And we have done articles about it and it's gone viral. You know, so there are a lot of things that Fashion Ghana has done, but we're talking about six years, so, sorry, five years, so maybe there are more things that I didn't, you know, recollect or prepare for to, to add to this. But yeah, there's been a lot of success that uh, Fashion Ghana has brought to designers. Talking about his expectation in the next five years, he said. Five years from now, I think um, Accra Fashion Week will definitely be the biggest uh, fashion event in Africa. Um, possibly, not possibly, possibly the biggest event in Ghana um, and Fashion Ghana will be the, one of the most popular media houses next like Joy FM and, and so on, networks or, so, or online platforms. Um, so that's definite, five, I mean that would probably be maybe two, three years, but you know, five years, there's a lot more that could be put in the mix. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share before leaving.